I'm building a tiny vacation home on wheels. Shut up and sit down. Lands, and I just wanted to let you know that I still use old school travel books. <laughs> I used to write for them for uh, things like Lonely Planet and stuff like that. And so I really love to like actually have something tangible in my hands, uh, especially when you don't have cell reception or Wi-Fi like right now. So uh, yeah, and also I got here early, so the visitor center is shut. So I just took a picture of the map that's on the outside. And of course I've got this book. So yeah, super cool. My first hike of the morning will be the White Rim Overlook and it's uh, 0.8 miles out, 0.8 miles back. So pretty easy hike. Um, there's not really a lot of long ones to do here. It's not really a mountain biking place either. So this is my first hike of the day. Um, I have been here before in September 2019. So I'll just splice in some pictures from then when the weather was nice and sunny and you know not too hot not too cold it's about 40 degrees right now there is some snow on the ground and uh, it's kind of overcast um, there's only probably about I've only seen maybe about five other cars uh, eight o'clock in the morning so um, that's nice so that's kind of cool that it's not busy like it was last time and the last time I was here I was with somebody who probably has never hiked a day in his life so unfortunately he didn't want to do anything he just wanted to take a picture and point at stuff and then keep going and claim that he did a park which is the worst type of traveler to travel with i actually like getting out and exploring you don't have to rush through 28 national parks in 30 days i mean who does that it's not impressive it's just ignorant so oh it's chilly i can feel the wind so yeah so uh i'm just gonna hike this quick two mile hike and then go to the uh, grand view i think it is at the end of the park and then i'm gonna backtrack and then i'm gonna head over to Can uh, capitol reef which is pretty much just a drive through but they have the best, oh my God, the best apple pie. I will show you the best apple pie that you can get in a state or national park in the United States. <laughs> so hopefully they'll be open and hopefully they'll have it. I mean, COVID took away my apple pie. <laughs> I mean, oh, come on COVID. At least give me back one thing. You know, I'll wear a mask, but I'll shove an apple pie in it so I can just chomp on it while I'm walking. Just a heads up that these are called cairns and there's one over there in the distance. Um, these are made by the uh, National Park Rangers to mark the trails. Don't make these yourself uh, and don't topple them down if it's like on a trail. If you just see a whole bunch of them together, like in a big pile, like someone's like, I need to do an Instagram picture. Then yeah, like you can undo those, but uh, generally don't be a cairn. <laughs> don't make these because when you take the rocks away, uh, without you know like if, anyway just don't move the rocks and don't take stuff home with you um, the National Park Service know what they're doing and so when they mark the trails like that just be respectful now if you do have to poop in a hole and you have to dig a little cat hole and then like you know cover your poop you do put just one rock over it so people know that you've you know done your business otherwise um, you know just don't touch anything <laughs> like everyone needs to like you know pee on everything like i'm gonna write my name all over everything no like don't write your name on stuff don't pee on everything don't build cairns just you know use your feet and sometimes your hands if you're climbing a scramble but that's it like nothing else no reason whatsoever for you to just you know kind of rearrange this isn't your living room you know if you want to rearrange stuff go home <laughs> so that's my PSA. 
anyway so yeah it's uh it's so nice out here so quiet the views are amazing unfortunately the iphone i'm filming on doesn't do it justice so you'll just have to come here and see it with your own eyes which is why i travel to kind of help people you know see what there is to do in the world and just to do it a little bit differently without destroying it So the funny thing is when people say, oh, how could you travel and live in a van? It's, it's so small. I mean, you have no room. No, I don't have any room at all. <laughs> I mean, this is practically my living room right here. So beautiful, so peaceful, except for my loud voice. I'm like, oh my God, look at the rocks. <laughs> no, it's really nice. There's another small group up there. But yeah, this is uh, super lovely. And you know, I've seen so many canyons in the last like week and a half that I'm not even canyoned out. I mean, look at these. They're like, um, what's that one where you can like go across the, the top of it and it's like a razor sharp. I don't know what park it's in. Zion, no, Yellowstone, Yosemite. I don't know, but it's one of them where you can just like, you have to like scoot your butt across the top and just straddle it because it's super, super thin. Oh, I gotta look it up. I'm having like a brain fart. But yeah, I mean, look at all these like bizarre rock formations and things. And this is just from like wind and water, you know, stuff we use every day, yet we don't live in places that look like this, you know? So that's why you got to conserve the water and you have to, you know, keep the air quality good and reduce ozone emissions <laughs> or whatever, you know, cause it's like, these have been here for millions of years, but you know, we're destroying it all pretty quickly just with the, the way that we live. So reduce your carbon footprint, um, but also support the national parks. Um, you can do that by visiting, by purchasing something from the gift shop, by donating, volunteering. And I always carry a little trash bag with me and I always pick up trash if I see it. So, so far it's been pretty good. Uh, pack in and pack out, but you always see like somebody that leaves a diaper or water bottle. You know. so apparently they just think like their mom's here or something. <laughs> you know, your mom's not here. Pick up your mom's. This is the end of my hike and the weather's clearing up. It's looking absolutely beautiful out here at Canyonlands. I got one more hike and then I'm gonna to drive to some of the overlook spots and then head out to uh, Capitol Reef. So super excited, actually in Paladuro, which is the second largest canyon in the country uh, in Texas near Amarillo. Uh, one of my favorite places, you can spend all day mountain biking. So, so fun. And um, they have the Capitol Rim mountain bike trail and they have like mini versions of the, uh, of the Capitol Rim uh, type of rock. And so I tell people when they're at the Lighthouse Rock that they should uh, go to Capitol Reef in Utah and they will see tons and tons and tons of the Capitol Rim type rock there and it's pretty cool. So it's supposed to look like a parliament building. But you know, um, I think when you're out in nature enough, you're like, that looks like a dolphin. No, that's a rock. That looks like a whale. No, that's a rock. Oh, look, it's a frog. That's another rock, Jenny. <laughs> so you start seeing things and it's kind of fun to play. Like, it's like the cloud game, you know, where you look at clouds and go, oh, look, it's a donkey riding a, riding a peacock. <laughs> so, yeah, it's when you start hallucinating, you're like, you know what, I don't think I drank enough water today. So anyway, back to Freda, she's over there. And off to the next spot.
the upheaval rock and this parking lot's pretty busy. Um, I don't remember if I did this before. I think I did. I think this is where I was hiking in, in heels <laughs> last time. Um, yeah, when you travel with someone that doesn't like hike and do outdoor stuff and then you just dress like a normal person. So yeah, so that's me right there a year and a half ago. So I have already been to this. So I'm just gonna mosey on back and head on over. I've got a two hour drive to Capitol Reef, which is gonna be super lovely. And um, I will then, uh, yeah, hopefully find a good place close to Bryce. I think I will go to Bryce and Zion. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a, um, get a ticket to, to Zion. I really have to try to get one tonight. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna head on back. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit busy here now that the weather's better. Reef Park you see it's super long and last time I was here we just kind of drove through but I think I'm gonna try to look for a mountain bike trail I haven't ridden my bike in two days so I really would like to get on my bike today so let's see if I can figure this out so this is super pretty and there is about eight miles to the visitor center and a 10 mile scenic loop that I can do on my bike and I think 10 miles would be good That'll be a good stretch my legs thing. I've been driving for the last almost three hours. Even though I did two hikes this morning, it was only about five miles of hiking total. And it was really just kind of a walk out and walk back on both those hikes. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go find the apple pie, which I think is at this park. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, some of these parks kind of meld together when you haven't been here in a year and a half. So yeah, so super fun. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of sprinters and camper vans, but it's not horrible like Moab. Moab was just, you know, I wanted to go and just do the Delicate Arch hike and go back to Canyonlands, but quite honestly, it's too Disneyland for me. And the people are just kind of pushy and rude. And then it got super busy when I was leaving, like super busy. So many cars coming in and it's only like a, a Wednesday. So I couldn't imagine what it was like here on spring break when some of the YouTube people I watch were like, yeah, Moab didn't really, it was very confusing, didn't really make sense. So um, I'm okay with crowds. I mean, I lived in some of the crowded cities and countries, you know, that there are, but I do enjoy the peace and quiet. So yeah, this is like my own personal little national park. This area is the natural bridge, which I did before. And here's some photos of that. And because I really want to ride my bike, I'm going to skip this because there's like 7,000 people here. So I guess that's one advantage of having been here before is that um, I don't have to do everything the second time. And because last time I was here as well, I was with that same person and we didn't have any like exercise stuff like bikes or running shoes or anything. So I think this time's just going to be kind of a me day uh, to go find the bike trail. This is another place I've already been, which is the petroglyphs. So it's just a very, very short kind of um, little area that you can walk and it's super cool. Um, here's some pictures of that too. 
So yes, yeah, so basically I'm just showing you things. If you've never been here before, these are just kind of stopping points. The, the park is just one way up, one way down, I think. So that's a fun place to stop and stretch your legs. Great for kids uh, to try to find the petroglyphs. And there is, I think, the apple pie. It's funny, they're all talking about their rigs. <laughs> I like your camper. And then they look at mine and go, what did you do? Anyway, so the scenic drive is over there. That's also where the apple pie is at. Here's the visitor center. I'm gonna go talk to them, see if I can get a map and just double check on a few things um, since it's been a while, so yeah. bike oh my god it feels so good there's prudence in the background and this is the scenic drive that I actually just drove up so it probably takes me all the way back to the entrance probably a little couple hills and things but I'm gonna drive through ride through the campground and the little orchard that they have the historical fruit district I believe <laughs> so I'm not even good with names when I'm not doing my job so anyway so yeah super pretty Gorgeous day, about 60 degrees, uh, and getting away from all the obnoxious people. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, uh, tourists versus travelers, you know how it is. I mean, do you really need to bring all that with you? I'm just kidding. Each to their own. Just be nice to everybody. Don't be pushy. And uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want. So the national parks are for everyone, but it's a privilege. So don't be a jerk and don't be rude. So yeah, just enjoy it. So there I am. Okay, off I go, 10 miles. Being British, I really like Marmite. Oh, hang on a minute. Marmot, what the heck's a Marmot? Do you even know? I don't even know what that is. Okay, that's a Marmot, okay. Thank you, Wikipedia. Okay, so I got my pie and they watched my bike for me since I didn't have a lock. And I'm just gonna go ride the whole 20 miles and then come back to this little picnic area and eat my pie. Cause they close at 4.30, I'm not gonna be back in time. But this is the little house you go to and they're out of apple, but I did get rhubarb, which is actually my favorite. So it's a win-win, I'm excited to eat it. They put a, two spoons in there. I'm not gonna make any friends today. That pie is all mine. So, all right, bike ride and let me get this out of the way come back and eat my pie this is the scenic road it's like a back road but it's 10 miles down not a through road and then 10 miles back up so this is why I took last time in the car so this is nice warm <laughs> got my pie super happy I've ridden eight miles from uh, the visitor center to here and the last two miles is this dirt road it's supposed to say capital gorge but it you know people I guess stole the letters I don't know why anyway so I'm not gonna ride my bike down there a little bit too gravelly but it's a dead end and then you turn around so you go down uh, two miles turn around come back so 16 miles is pretty good considering going back up here is uphill so that'll be fun Anyway, super gorgeous, beautiful day. Much nicer here than it was at Capital, no, Canyon, Canyonlands this morning. So definitely a good end to the day. And then after this, I head to Bryce, find some BLM land to uh, boondock on. And tomorrow, hopefully Bryce and Zion, we'll see. Zion, I might just ride my bike. I may not be able to do all the hiking. Might have to come back and do that.
So this is the rhubarb pie that I carried for 16 miles on my bike ride. There's Prudence over there. And this is actually my favorite kind of pie, which I grew up in England with. And for some reason, rhubarb pie was a thing. So they're out of apple, which is fine. And yeah, I'm just gonna eat this and enjoy the view and then figure out where to go next. random stop. This is uh, Paul Newman's house from uh, that movie, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Um, so apparently Butch Cassidy or Paul Newman lived here. I don't know if he actually did, but people believe it and it's a uh, tourist spot. Actually, you can kind of see all of the different cowboys, I guess, from like, you can go to Tombstone, Arizona, and you can just kind of follow all of the cast members from all of the western movies that were made about them i guess um so yeah it's uh kind of funny i don't really know a lot about western american like cowboys uh well in england we didn't know right so we called it cowboy and indian cowboys and indians um but no like i didn't know a lot about the uh the different history of um the american wild west so I think it's fascinating to kind of learn. Um, it's so cheesy. <laughs> so anyway, so then, um, yeah, you can just come here. This is on the way to the rest stop in Utah. Uh, it's about, I don't know, 50 miles north of Bryce. So yeah, so um, that's that. There you go. And if you drive through Texas, maybe, you can see, or I think it's uh, New Mexico, I don't know, but on, when you're driving back to Texas from somewhere, you can see um, like um, the Butch Cassidy Museum. And apparently that's his home, which is very far from the museum. So his grave is in uh, the other town. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it on this, you know, I'll put it in the subtitles on the screen once I look it up on Wikipedia when I have a minute. Anyway, so that was fun, five minutes. Although I did stay at the Hotel Luna Mystica in the uh, Western RV that they had converted. So I did get to wake up to a picture of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which was quite nice. Okay, I need a shower desperately. Just a heads up, the rest area that I was gonna stay at, which is about 10 miles down the road is closed. It looks like construction maybe like after the winter or something there was some issues so i'm now at the dixie national forest and this is just a parking lot i'm just gonna park behind this bush here and should be fine i don't see anybody so we'll see <laughs> i got security so yeah it doesn't look like anyone's really gonna come by here so this is on free roam as a restful night's sleep so i will be getting up super early tomorrow Otherwise, I think I'll just park behind this bush here. <laughs> we'll see. This is the fun side of boondocking when you're not like at a rest center, but I will not pay for an RV park and I will not pay for a campground unless there's a park attached to it <laughs> and I can actually enjoy the park the next day. So um, my money goes to state parks, uh, national parks, <laughs> um, but because it's BLM land, I can park here. So we'll see, hopefully no one will no one will tell me to leave. There might be a better place for me to park over there. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll move. I think this is kind of a bit out of the way. I think I'll move over. Good morning from Utah. This is the Dixie National Forest. This is my boondocking spot. A massive, massive area, gravel lot. And I was all by myself, kind of parked somewhat behind this tree super quiet a little bit windy but uh yeah uh just come up here i'll link the uh, coordinates below it's just linked as uh, restful night sleep on free roam app um but yeah super nice super quiet i did originally park over there by the trees and then i decided it would be better to park in the uh, parking lot um yeah so it's blm land so that's good and I had a trouble spot the night, uh, the place before, obviously by main road, ambient noise right there. I had a little bit of trouble um, trying to get to the um, uh, the official rest stop. It was uh, locked. The gate was locked, and it looked like construction. So I ended up here. 
no complaints. A little chilly, it's like 35 degrees. So I'm gonna head to Bryce today and then uh, the Grand Staircase and then tomorrow Zion and then the Grand Canyon, Saturday, Sunday, which I know everyone's like, well, I don't go to the Grand Canyon on the weekend. It's one of those places that are busy all the time. <laughs> so it's kind of like they're prepared to have lots of tourists and lots of visitors since I'm not a tourist. And I do not want to be a tourist. No, but anyway, um, it's uh, basically like, you know, they're prepared to have lots of people. It's one of those places that is gonna be busy no matter when you go. So just go, just go and enjoy it. There are places you can go that are away from the crowds, which I will show you. I found a few hidden gems, hopefully as empty as this uh, area right here. So I am out and on the road for 45 minutes to get to Bryce. It's funny when you're coming back to a place to do a redo. I have a resume for this tunnel road. I did a cartwheel across it about a year and a half ago. Uh, I'm so excited they have horseback riding here, which I don't think I'm gonna do which I do want to do on this trip, but maybe not like right now. I think I'm just going to ride my bike in Bryce and then head to the Escalante uh, Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument. It's already getting kind of busy here in, uh, here in Bryce land. <laughs> 